This is Mike. And we're down here in the former Michigan Mall just looking at the renovations as it's being returned into an automobile thoroughfare. That's right, a thoroughfare. So we can get thoroughly through the center of town now without having to walk around it. Right? That's right, absolutely. And we're excited. Boy, are we. This is more exciting than the Aquatic Center. <laughs> the Aquatic Center, the possible $9 million swimming pool. Well, that has nothing to do with what we're talking no, about. No, we'll here. leave that for another segment. That's right, we're getting wet here, but. Riverwalk Center parking. Construction workers laughing. <laughs> well, let's see what's down at the other end. downtown Battle Creek with all the construction going on and waiting for that grand reopening of the mall. Uh, we're standing in front of Norman's camera, one of the supporters of the downtown for many years. They're still in business anyway. They look like they're doing okay. Apparently all work crews have to have at least one person wearing a cowboy hat. Battle Creek, and here's what it looks like right now. You're looking at Michigan Avenue like it hasn't been seen for nearly 20 years. It's open to traffic.
And News 3's David Winter reports on how today's opening of the Michigan Mall paves the way to downtown economic recovery. Here we go. No one in the Battle Creek Central marching band is old enough to remember when cars drove down this stretch of Michigan Avenue. It was turned into a pedestrian mall in 1974. At the time, we thought it would be a very, very good idea. Bill Perlman owns one of the businesses that helped fund the $1.5 million pedestrian mall in 1974. When businesses started leaving, so did his enthusiasm. But the mall stayed for 18 years, until today. Traffic noise on the mall is unusual. It's, uh, it's strange they have that as a welcome, uh, a welcome sound. Bill Sharkey with the Downtown Development Authority says it took about a million dollars to undo what his predecessors did 18 years ago. It's just a step towards the right direction. Easy to say for a shoe store owner. Mark Rice says it's a million dollars well spent. The exposure from the front, uh, people being able to pull up and park for free. You had to go so far to park, for one thing. I think it's going to be real convenient. It's going to be nice. David Chase appreciates being able to pull up, park, and shop. It, it reminds me of when I was real young. I was born and raised in this town, and my mom she used to bring me out when the Bijou Theater was down there. The Bijou Theater, now reopened as the Team 3 Bicycle Shop by Mike Wood. He moved to downtown because of the fact that it would be open to car traffic. People can find us. It's real easy. And what people can find, people can buy. Thank all of you for being here to help us celebrate this this occasion. Um, I do have some acknowledgments. I'd like to acknowledge a few organizations that were very instrumental in the restreeting project. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the CCDC, the Serial City Development Corporation. They were one of the two that really got the ball rolling and pushed the concept for restreeting. Also, the Downtown Battle Creek Association, they were also instrumental in getting the ball rolling and pushed this concept of restreeting. There was also a mall, a mall focus group that gave input to the mall and its design, and we're very appreciative of them. The architectural firm O'Boyle, Cowell, Blaylock & Associates. The general contractor, Hoffman Brothers. The subcontractors, American Tile & Masonry, Duckwork Brothers, Inc. Murray Brothers Construction, Schweitzer's Incorporated, Thompson McCulley, Globe Construction, Union Construction Company, Chapman's Nursery and Landscape. These people, they have worked into the night many, many days and in all kinds of weather. So we're very appreciative of the contractors and the subcontractors. Also, I think it 
it's very important to pay due respect to the city public works staff because they work very, very hard and arduous in this uh, project as well, along with the DDA, the Downtown Development Authority. We appreciate them. It's also a real privilege to announce that we do have a grand marshal in the grand marshal that will be in the, you know, the white limousine and make sure that everybody recognizes him and acknowledges him when he comes by is Alex Radai. Alex is the oldest and longest merchant in the downtown Battle Creek, so we're really pleased to have Alex be our grand marshal. There are a few speakers that would like to say a few words. And first of all, I'd like to ask Bob Windsor if he would say a few words on behalf of the DBCA. Bob? Thank you, Mayor Colasso. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Downtown Battle Creek Association thanks the literally hundreds of people that helped make this project become a reality. Opening of the Michigan Avenue is an important tool, one of the tools, that will help the revitalization of this core. We're not able to attract investors, and a shining example of that is Team 3 Swing. And by the way, if you haven't been in their store, I hope that you'll take the time to do it today. I know they'll welcome you. And knowing President Judith Smith and Executive Director Jack Hall of Seattle City Development Corporation, I think we can all be assured that they're working hard to attract more businesses in the not too distant future. The businesses in this particular construction zone. Turn your thoughts for just a moment, if you will, to the businesses in the West End, like our brand new Discount Home Supply, San Lass, Tony's Chop Suey, or Roma Cafe. Can you imagine the nightmare of directing the unfamiliar consumer to their particular location? It's much easier. We had an example yesterday afternoon, a lady called from Quincy. She said, I've never been in downtown Battle Creek. Is it difficult? I said, it sure isn't. She's coming Friday, by the way. <laughs> Come in 66, second light to the left, second block, you'll see our store parked right in front, and if you can't, there's plenty of parking at the back. She said, that's simple. When the telephone callers consistently say, where are you located on Beckley Road? It's time to open up and have drive-by exposure. Maybe before that long, that same caller will say, ah, I know where you're located. I saw your store when I was driving by. Ladies and gentlemen, the 135 businesses and members of Downtown Battle Creek Association vision a downtown that plays a truly important role in this community. An area that is productive, beautiful, and most of all, an area that each of us can be proud of. Thank you, Bob, for taking half my speech. Thank you. <laughs> and now, if uh, you just want to come forward and say a few words on behalf of the CCDC. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is clear with the opening of Michigan Avenue, we have come full circle. The dynamics of mass merchandising just 25 years ago led to the creation of the downtown pedestrian mall with its anchored department store. Just as quickly, the extension of infrastructure to the rural areas and suburbs created the suburban enclosed shopping mall with ample space for free parking. This development rendered the downtown mall anchor store concept obsolete. As we have seen the Beckley Corridor prosper with retail growth, we have recognized the need to, again, change the downtown infrastructure and reposition our downtown to a mixed-use center involving business, education, entertainment, and destination shopping. The repositioning of the downtown has been aided significantly 
in spite of today's announcement of uh, by the decision of Transamerica to remain in downtown Battle Creek. And by earlier decisions by the Kellogg Company, the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, and many small businesses. In the same way, the change has enabled the downtown to accommodate the Western Michigan University United, United Arts Council developments. My congratulations to the City Commission of Battle Creek and to City, City Manager Rand's leaders for their support and for continuing the tradition of the public-private partnership, which has contributed so much momentum to the rebuilding of the city. In closing, I have heard that as a much younger man, Hugh Wright used to cruise the street in his father's coal truck. The road is bad now, Hugh, but leave the coal truck at home. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuda. Before I um, bring our third speaker on, I would like to make just one quick comment. It's, it's always nice to see the morning mayor bowing to the afternoon mayor here in front. Want to get up? I don't think he will be able to get up. So. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to ask Bob Sharkey from the Downtown Development Authority to make some comments. Bob? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, our job as the Downtown Development Authority was to pay for the renovations, and, and we were happy to do that. The Downtown Development Authority is a, what they call a TIFA, and we use some of the money that's generated by the taxes and the increase in property values to pay for projects in order to encourage and promote economic growth in Battle Creek. Today, Michigan Avenue is being reopened. We're opening up the Central Business District again. We're helping link the East End Business District with the West End Business District. And we're very happy to continue this example of investment in the community by the community. And I'm looking forward to Mayor, uh, Mayor Palasa addressing us again, but I'm also looking forward to the opportunity to cruise with that. <laughs> In 1973, bond certificates were issued to finance the construction of the downtown mall. Construction started in the spring of 1974, and the mall was completed in November of that year. At that time, communities all over the country were constructing pedestrian malls to maintain and strengthen their downtowns as viable business and retail centers. However, over the years, with the advent of the suburban growth and closed suburban malls, it became apparent that cities with this type of structure would have to change, or downtown would have nothing left but boarded up storefronts and bands coming from behind. <laughs> Thank you. Battle Creek was very cognizant of this fact, and many people and organizations worked long and hard to try and maintain our downtown mall as a viable retail center. These past efforts have to be commended, but even festivals, special events, and creative marketing couldn't compete with the high, compete with the high visibility, easy parking and access, and other amenities of suburban and closed malls. In 1990, Johnson, Johnson, and Roy did the Central Area Framework Plan, and from that came the recommendations for the removing of the mall. This was supported by the DBCA, and a focus group was formed to help study the project. Presentations were made to many organizations to get community input for this project. This project cost $950,000, but I'm pleased to say that it was completed in four months. I would not only like to thank you get all the players that I acknowledged earlier, but also thank my fellow city, city commissioners for standing strong on a tough issue and bringing this reopening to fruition. I think it's important to recognize some of the businesses that didn't move and decided to stick it out during this long process. You have Perlman Jewelers, Rice's Shoe Store, Bailey's Jewelers, Godfrey Jewelers, Plant Moran, and Price Waterhouse, just to name a few. I believe this project is a springboard for the future growth to our downtown. 
However, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Kellogg World Headquarters and the W.K. Kellogg Foundation for helping to set the stage for downtown future growth. The benefits of this restraining project are many, such as it will improve circulation downtown by connecting the east with the west end. It will improve access to downtown. There will be parking, uh, there will be on-street parking, improved access to the Riverwalk, and finally, it is one of the major factors to bring our downtown back. And I show you, I mentioned earlier, I received a postcard from a gentleman called Tom Rimby from Coldwater, Michigan. This postcard was mailed in 1944, and it shows the mall from the, it says Michigan Avenue looking west from Monument Square, and it shows the street all the way through. And if you stop me, I'll show this to you. I'd like to give this to our historical society if I may. We have come a long ways. Future growth will not be rapid, but incremental. We're seeing it as we stand here today with Western Michigan University and Team Team 3 Schwinn coming downtown. I truly believe, as does the City Commission, this is a positive step for the future growth of Battle Creek. Before we have the ribbon cutting, I understand the Battle Creek Central Band has a selection that they'd like to play for us. Now play. <laughs> Excuse me. Arthur Creek is going to play first. Now we can we'll get ready. Thank you, Battle Creek Central Band and the Harper Creek Band. Uh, before we start the ribbon cutting, I would like to say that many merchants, including the United Arts Council Discovery Theater, are having an open house following the ceremony, so please stay around. Uh, and now I think it's time to cut the ribbon. I would like to ask um, Bob Winsor, Eunice Smith, and Bob Sharkey to come up, along with the Vice Mayor Gallagher, Second Ward Commissioner William Boards, Commissioner Drovia, Commissioner Benke, and Past Commissioner Ralph Cates to help cut this ribbon. Thank you. We'll need everybody to kind of move apart here because we're going to have some classic uh, autos. Classic autos. Thank you. 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 